guys so i am here at the art event in morro bay today and i was just extremely captivated when i walked by this specific booth and it captures something called fractal art and i never heard of fractal art before and it actually has a lot to do with mathematical formulas in order to create a lot of the images that you're seeing and in the video i'll put it in high def so you can get a good feel for what it looks like but when you're in person the colors are even that much more vibrant it's it's very very unique and this is the gentleman that has the booth go ahead and introduce yourself and <laughs> please if you wouldn't mind explaining a bit more in terms of what fractal art is sure. all about and some of the pieces that you have up they're they're quite spectacular <laughs> sure well my name is David Blonsky and uh, I am an artist and musician And um, I actually discovered the world of fractal geometry because I was trying to create uh, imagery to go along with my concerts for large screen um, uh, projections that would stand behind me as I performed on stage. And a friend introduced me to this, this world. And uh, basically, fractal mathematics involves a new form of mathematics that a lot of people call the geometry of nature. Um, and because it provided mathematicians their first way to describe the organic shapes that they saw in the world. You know, mathematicians could describe a circle, a square, a triangle, a dohecahedron. You know, all those geometric shapes that you studied in uh, geometry class. And so they had ways to describe that. When it came to a cloud, a coastline, a spiraling galaxy, the systems were so complicated they had no real way to explain those kinds of shapes. So they said it was in the area of chaos. And so you've heard maybe of chaos theory. Well, this is an extension of that. And so what happened in the late 70s, a man named um, Benoit Mandelbrot um, discovered a simple formula that if you fed it into a feedback loop, it would uh, create um, an infinite points of space. Uh, in space that you could actually graph out um, at kind of almost like a map. And right here we see an example of this particular formula. And so this is a typical Mandelbrot spiral and uh, it's created by just using a very, very simple formula. It's just maybe three or four um, um, components to the formula. It's actually surprisingly simple. but cool thing is that it's a feedback loop. So what happens is you put a number in, you get a number out. The number you get out, you put back in, you get a new number. You take that number, you put it in over and over and over and over, and you can actually go to infinity. So any of these images that you see, no matter which image you're looking at, it's like a gateway into an alternate universe because there's no end of this. You can dive into this image for as long until your computer crashes basically because this is it took the it took the computer and the formula to exist at the same time to be able to have this happen because there's so many calculations that have to be done to create an image like this that it couldn't have been done before computers so it was just kind of a a, a very interesting timing thing that it all came together at the same time so the first images that were done were just black and white images because they were just points in space so you basically ended up with like a map but not only do you have the 2d version but because you can dive down into this image it's actually 3d so you can actually dive and dive and dive and dive. And some of the pr uh, programs that they've developed for math, uh, for fractal geometry and for creating this artwork, you can actually point and click. Once you get the formula running and have an image created, you can point and click and dive down into this image and it will just keep coming and keep developing. So you can blow up any one of these little areas that have detail and I think a great example of that that he showed me was actually within this one here because it's just like complex and he referred to it as a gateway, which I think is a very good yeah, adjective a, for it. Uh, yeah, it's a gateway into an infinite universe because you can explore, you can dive into any one of these little places anywhere in the image and go deeper and deeper and deeper and there's really no end to it. Now what will happen is there's, 
in chaos theory, you always want to be on the edge of chaos. That's where all the interesting stuff is. So, for instance, if you dive into this blue area, you're probably never ever going to see anything except blue. But when you dive into any place that's complex on the edge of chaos, that's where all the real magic happens. So once again, in any of these images, if you dive into these big bands of color, then there's really not much there. It's always the edge where all the magic happens. It's where the numbers... When you see a solid color, that's that's when your, your um, equation gets a finite answer. You ever seen like a, um, if, you talk, if you think about the golden mean triangle mm -hmm. uh, and the golden mean ratio and pi, those are numbers that go on forever in, for infinity. They, they never end. And that's what this represents. All this detail comes from those places where, the, where, the, where static, uh, a finite answer is given and where the runaway answers are. And that's where all this detail yes. comes from, is that, is that area that rides the edge of chaos. And so much of he, these formulas that he's speaking of, like the golden mean, are actually used to create a lot of different famous architectural pieces throughout the world. Yeah. And All those big cathedrals that, um, that you see in Europe, those fancy, gorgeous cathedrals that were built in, you know, for anywhere from the 800s to maybe 1400, uh, well, even some of the new stuff too, but all those amazing, amazing, huge buildings that had stone walls that just reached up forever, how did they support themselves? Um, and that was all because they used that golden mean ratio. That's that, the ratio that's in that spiral to z design all those self-supporting arches. So uh, the golden mean, those ratios have been around for a long time. But it took Benoit Mandelbrot, the, who had the genius, to be able to create the formula that you could just ride that little line of where chaos is. So, uh, yeah, and, and it, it, it's just like each one of these images is a different formula. And each one of those formulas is an infinite universe. So you, you feel like you're an explorer of alternate universes is what you feel like. And it, it, it really kind of uh, uh, drives home the point that, you know, anything is possible. I mean, you know, there's just, the you know, the the cool thing about this art is the possibilities are endless. And just like you were saying, the application that the same type of math can have not only to art, but even to help scientists try and figure out different answers to different questions, like yeah. you were explaining with the rainforest. Ex is exactly. So, so when you have a complex system and you have to crunch a lot of numbers, fractal algorithms can actually simplify the process. So they've been able to determine how much oxygen a rainforest will um, create because they can extrapolate because trees, things in nature, grow in fractal patterns. So if you look at a pine tree or if you look at a pine cone or if you look at a, a, a tomato or, a, a, or any of those kinds of things and you cut them in, you'll see spirals, you'll see very intriguing, interesting patterns. Nature organizes itself in fractal patterns. So using that knowledge, they can calculate using a fractal algorithm to calculate how many branches, how many leaves a tree, how many trees are going to be in the forest, and they can actually extrapolate how much oxygen uh, a forest is going to create. Um, they can do um, population statistics, and they can they can extrapolate you know different things by using formulas. They can extrapolate you know how to control a population studies. Um, the uh, the uh, antenna chip that is in most cell phones these days is actually a fractal pattern because there's so much detail you can actually get in a small amount of space you can get you know a three foot long wire lead but it's all on a tiny little chip that's only one by one um, so it's really uh, pretty fascinating there's a lot of practical applications to this and of course in the entertainment industry, they use fractal algorithms for almost all the CGI that you see. All those Godzillas and landscapes on other worlds and alien creatures, the skin textures, the realism that they can create these days. It's because they use fractal algorithms in the, in the software that they're using to create that imagery that simplifies that 
um, simplifies that process of creating, you know, things that look like they're natural. You know, that's what that's what they say that that fractal geometry is really the geometry of nature, and it's given the mathematicians, you know, their first glimpse into that world of chaos that they just could never deal with before. Very nice. Thank you so much for your time and uh, my pleasure. amazing explanations and applications of fractal formulas and how they're applied to art and life and nature. <laughs> Very interesting thing.